Hello and welcome to Mr. Summer Hayes' video podcast on prehistoric medicine. Okay, let's get rid of that. First up, civilization. Um, not that they had much civilization. Uh, they were nomadic people, which meant that they wandered around all over the place. Here's a picture of them being nomadic, wandering around. Um, they also couldn't write. This is because it was pre history yeah before history was written down which a means it's difficult for us to know exactly what happened but b it means that they couldn't pass on any knowledge other than to just tell their um, sons or daughters so any knowledge that was found out by them was quickly either forgotten or it, it couldn't be passed around various tribes. Now we think that they didn't know much, they were pretty clueless about a lot of things um, including for example there are some tribes uh, of primitive people, not prehistoric people but primitive people um, nowadays who we have to base our theories on like the Aborigines um, who didn't know that sex led to having babies um, but again I reiterate that we don't know exactly what they knew and what they didn't know if we do liken them to Aborigines because uh, that's the closest we're going to get we'll find that they actually tended to blame everything on spirits because they didn't know what was causing them harm they automatically thought that it was an outside influence the heebie-jeebies secondly their knowledge of the body and disease wasn't very great uh, they knew a little bit about bone structure um, and possibly and they may have been cannibals so they might have known where the bones and the organs lay but we don't know that for sure um, they obviously believe spirits little ghosty things and so that brings us to surgery we know that they could do some sort of surgery because we have evidence of trepanning um, where they would drill or make some sort of hole in the skull and we know that it was done before they died because it re-heals over so they must have been successful and this person must have lived for a little bit of time after the surgery was done obviously they did that to let the spirits out um, from the Aborigines we know that they possibly could set some bones in mud although we have actually found um, some bro broken bones that haven't healed properly so maybe they weren't as good as the Aborigines at that. Um, we know that they had tools this guy here who's called called Otzi was found in the ice with some um, copper tools and some stone tools so they may have been able to do some superficial surgery with that um, but yeah again we don't know exactly what they could do and what they couldn't do diagnosis and treatment would be done by these guys shaman or witch doctors there's probably not the best name from a doctor because they weren't really doctors they were more like priests and they would be the ones who uh, diagnose that you've got bad spirits in you so you've got to let them out which is the treatment um, here's a much better shaman who's in the booth of the mighty bush they possibly had um, ceremonies to get rid of evil spirits um, amulets 
and magic charms and even magic paintings which sound cool um, to get rid of the evil heebie-jeebies everything that they did that they did do would have been down to trial and error and if something worked whether it was one of those things or a herbal remedy because they did have some herbs oxy was found with birch fungus which is a um, an antibacterial whether he knew how to use it or not we don't know um, everything they did either spiritually or with the practical treatments um, would have been down to trial and error and anything that succeeded they would carry on doing and if it didn't they would probably stop doing and it would be passed on the good stuff would be passed on verbally public health in um, prehistoric times was pretty much non-existent they um, possibly like the aborigines buried their poo outside their camp which would obviously be healthy but that was more down to the the Aborig aborigines anyway believed that if somebody else found their poo they could use it in a spell against them um, they were nomadic like I said before so wandering around leaving your litter behind um, going from place to place is not conducive to a settled society and therefore sewers etc okay finally doctors well like I said the witch doctors the shaman um, weren't really doctors they were more priests uh, they didn't really have anything that we would uh, classes of docs are I, I looking at the facts and observing the patient and treating it accordingly they just did it because of spirits okay the different factors involved individuals we don't know because we don't know any of the individuals technology well some basic tools trepanning war they must have fought each other and hunted at times so that might might have improved them but we don't know chance who knows religion well religion obviously had a big factor if you count superstition and um, spirits as part of religion but it didn't necessarily advance medicine um, it may have even hindered it communication they didn't write anything down so it wasn't passed on very quickly it's all verbal no government so to speak as far as you know certainly one that uh, wouldn't do public health and the last one trade well they may have traded with each other and different tribes with different herbs different weapons or tools etc but we do not know for sure Right, that is the end of Prehistoric Medicine video podcast. Try and find my next one on Egyptian Medicine.